Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about tonsillitis. So before understanding tonsillitis, we have to know what is a tonsil. The tonsils are the oval shaped pads of tissue at the back of the throat. You can see the oval shaped pads of tissue which are situated in the back of the throat. They are two in number. Whenever there is an inflammation of these pads of tissue, then it is known as tonsillitis. Tonsillitis is an inflammation of two oval shaped pads of tissue at the back of the throat. Etiology Acute tonsillitis often attacks the school going children, but it also affects the adults. Tonsillitis is rare in infants and old people above 50 years of age. So you see, it is common in children and young adults, rare in infants and old age. Etiology Hemolytic streptococcus is the most commonly infecting organism. So the bacteria Hemolytic streptococcus, this is the most common one which is infecting, this is the most common infecting organism which is infecting the tonsils and producing tonsillitis. The other bacteria which contribute in tonsillitis are hemolytic influenza, staphylococci, pneumococci. So guys, hemolytic streptococcus, most common one, hemolytic influenza, staphylococci and pneumococci are the supporting ones. These bacteria may primarily infect the tonsil. So directly the bacterial tonsillitis can occur or it may be secondary to viral infection. So first the virus acts and then secondary to the viral infection, these bacteria can produce tonsillitis. Either they can be primarily infecting the tonsil or come in secondary to viral infection. Symptoms of tonsillitis, sore throat, they also suffer from difficulty in swallowing, fever 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. The fever may be associated with the chills and rigor. Ear ache. Either referred pain from tonsil or the result of acute otitis media which may occur as a complication. So guys what's happening here the person having tonsillitis will suffer from ear ache. Why is the person having ear ache? Either it is a referred pain from the tonsil the pain can go to the ear. That is the first uh, possibility. The second thing they are saying as a result of AOM. Acute otitis media. What happens in this is the bacteria from the tonsil will spread to the middle ear. When it will spread to the middle ear, it will cause the otitis media, then resulting in ear pain. Basically, it started from the tonsil. That bacteria will invade the middle ear, producing acute otitis media. This is also a complication of tonsillitis. The constitutional symptoms will be headache, malaise. A feeling of uh, general discomfort, constipation and abdominal pain. These are the constitutional symptoms. Headache, body ache, malaise, constipation and abdominal pain. The signs. Breath is fetid and tongue is coated. So when you see the person having tonsillitis, acute tonsillitis, the breath is fetid, foul smelling breath. And the tongue is going to be coated. Hyperemia of pillars, ivula and soft palate. So you can see here, they have given the tonsil swollen and red. Mild redness and swelling of ivula. You can see uh, clearly identify the signs of tonsillitis in this. Hyperemia, guys what's hyperemia? When there is an excess of blood supply in the vessels which are supplying the tonsil. Whenever the blood supply is increasing, the hyperemia of the pillars, evula. You can look at the evula here and even the soft palate is affected. Tonsils are red and swollen with yellowish spots of purulent material. It is present at the opening of crypts. So you can see that the tonsil has crypts. So this tonsil has crypts. 
basically what's happening the tonsil is going to become red and swollen apart from that there are going to be yellow spots on the tonsil where are the uh, spots present in the opening of these crypts this tonsil is having crypts the yellow spots are present with the opening at the crypts these are the signs the types of acute tonsillitis acute catarrhal or superficial tonsillitis acute follicular tonsillitis acute parenchymatous tonsillitis and acute membranous tonsillitis catarrhal follicular parenchymatous and membranous we'll discuss each of them in detail in the coming slides starting with the catarrhal tonsillitis when the tonsils are inflamed as a part of the generalized infection of the oropharyngeal mucosa so whenever there is a generalized infection of the upper respiratory tract and the oropharyngeal mucosa when uh, the resulting in the inflammation of the tonsils then it is known as catarrhal pharyngi uh, tonsillitis okay then you see acute follicular tonsillitis the cyst filled with purulent material you see in follicular tonsillitis a cyst is going to be formed and the cyst is filled with a purulent material which is pus and it is seen as a yellow spot you can clearly identify in the picture the yellow spots the whitish membrane on the medial surface of the tonsil which can be easily wiped away with the swab in a follicular tonsillitis the medial surface of the tonsil you can see the medial surface is going to have a whitish membrane and this membrane can be wiped up with a swab and it is containing it has a cyst which contains purulent material this cyst you can identify here okay moving on to the next type acute parenchymatous tonsillitis in parenchymatous tonsillitis the tonsil surface is going to be affected that's understood tonsil is congested and uniformly enlarged in parenchymatous what's happening tonsil is congested and also the enlarged tonsils uniform enlargement of the tonsils then the thing here is the lymph nodes involvement will be there they become enlarged and tender the lymph nodes which are the lymph nodes the jugulo digastric lymph nodes you can see here the jugulo digastric lymph nodes are enlarged and tender there is congestion and the tonsils are uniformly enlarged along with this the jugulo digastric lymph nodes are going to be enlarged and tender in parenchymatous type you can see the jugulo digastric lymph nodes here near the tonsils they are going to be present these lymph nodes will be enlarged acute membranous tonsillitis in membranous tonsillitis the tonsils will be enlarged and congested so much that they almost meet in the midline along with some edema of the uvula so guys you cannot uh, make out two different things here they are swollen to such an extent that this is a tonsil this is a tonsil they'll be swollen to such an extent that they meet in the midline and along with that the uvula is also going to be swollen there is edema of uvula and also the soft palate you can see the edema and they are meeting and there is no differentiation in between the two okay the complications of acute tonsillitis chronic recurrent tonsillitis so the acute can turn into a chronic tonsillitis by the recurrent attacks then they have said about quincy here quincy is nothing but the peritonsillar abscess uh, whenever the infection will spread beyond the tonsil into the peritonsillar space you can look in the picture here from the tonsil it is spreading into the peritonsillar space resulting in quincy or uh, peritonsillar abscess then you see the other complication is the parapharyngeal abscess parapharyngeal abscess is nothing but the deep neck space abscess the deep neck space whenever the abscess is formed in the parapharyngeal space it is known as parapharyngeal abscess cervical abscess aom they are saying about acute otitis media here in acute otitis media i told you from the tonsil the bacteria will spread to the middle ear resulting in the acute otitis media 
even in the rheumatic fever and acute glomerulonephritis could be the complication sabe it can also uh, the one of the complication is subacute bacterial endocarditis sabe is subacute bacterial endocarditis these are the complications of acute tonsillitis it can cause it can become chronic tonsillitis quincy parapharyngeal abscess these are the surrounding sites you see quincy parapharyngeal abscess cervical abscess acute otitis media it is going to the ear rheumatic fever acute glomerulonephritis sabe that is subacute bacterial endocarditis treatment for acute tonsillitis bed rest and fluids analgesics pcm and aspirin so guys you can see here pcm is the paracetamol and the aspirin these are very effective painkillers which are given in tonsillitis antibiotics penicillin erythromycin for 7 to 10 days should be given warm saline or betadine gargles should be done this is about the treatment with this we come to an end of acute tonsillitis next we'll discuss about chronic tonsillitis a complication of acute tonsillitis when the tonsillitis is for the prolonged years or recurrent attacks leading to chronic tonsillitis what is the cause it is a complication of acute tonsillitis pathologically what's happening a micro abscess walled off by fibrous tissue have been seen in the lymphoid follicles of tonsil so you see the lymphoid follicle of tonsil imagine this is a lymphoid follicle of tonsil what's happening a micro abscess guys what's a micro abscess whenever there is a localized collection of pus and this thing it is walled off by the fibrous tissue and this is found inside the lymphoid follicle a localized collection of pus which is walled off by the fibrous tissue and it is found in the follicles lymphoid follicles of tonsils this is how the chronic thing is formed the pus is being walled off it is concealed there itself subclinical infections of tonsils without an acute attack they are saying that uh, the chronic tonsillitis occurs also because of the subclinical infection subclinical in the sense there are no signs and symptoms the patient is asymptomatic so he is not taking any treatment that can result in uh, chronic uh, tonsillitis mostly the chronic tonsillitis is found in children and young adults it is rarely above the 50 years of age then you see the chronic infection in sinus or the teeth may be a predisposing factor why is sinus and teeth involvement the infection of sinus and teeth is being a predisposing factor here this is what we have to know see guys what's happen in uh, like tonsillitis generally what happens they become enlarged whenever they are enlarged they obstruct the sinus drainage when the sinus drainage is uh, obstructed it will lead to the poor drainage of the sinus which will create a perfect environment for the bacteria to breed resulting in the chronic tonsillitis the chronic infections in the sinus or the teeth which will create a good environment for the bacteria to breed spreading the infection and resulting in tonsillitis complications peritonsillar abscess again parapharyngeal abscess intratonsillar abscess the tonsil being trapped inside the tonsillar space intratonsillar abscess tonsilloliths so guys they're saying about the calculi here tonsillar calculi the stones tonsilloliths tonsillar cyst you can see the cyst formation here in this picture uh okay i need to zoom it okay the this thing okay the cyst formation you can make out the cyst here this is a complication tonsillolits you can see the calculi here in this picture in this picture as well the cyst you can identify the cyst and also here the calculi then tonsillar cyst focus of infection in rheumatoid fever acute glomerular renal failure acute glomerular nephritis eye and skin disorders okay these are the complications then we move on to the treatment the conservative treatment attention to the general health of the patient good diet treatment of coexistent infection of teeth 
if there is a localized infection of the teeth nose and the sinus neighborhood if there is an infection we need to treat that so that it does not breed the bacteria and cause tonsillitis then in uh, like uh, worst conditions lasting tonsillectomy when the tonsils will start interfering with the speech the deglutition is nothing but the swallowing respiration or they cause recurrent attacks when they start interfering with the speech respiration and deglutition and they are also causing the recurrent attacks of tonsillitis so the person have to land up in tonsillectomy that is removal of tonsil which is given in the picture here so guys with this we come to an end of acute tonsillitis the types chronic tonsillitis hope the video is clear if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe